Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's Salesforce video, I'm going to show you how to use validation rules. Actually, you can use validation rules for many, many different purposes. I'm just going to show you very basically what a validation rule is and a very simple example of how it can be used with a data field. Right, so if you remember from uh, my other video, this is a lightning app that I had created, which is called Speedy Sales. This application does not really exist. It's just a fictive, uh, a demo um, app. And I had created a custom object that's called Purchase Orders. Now uh, I have created another custom object that's called Speedy Products. Right, so this is... This is a custom object to store uh, product information. And in this custom object, I have created, um, well, first of all, the product ID is an auto number. So remember that when you, re uh, when you create a custom object, it's per default set to a text field. But what you can do is you can edit this and then make it an auto number instead. So this is what I did. And remember, every time you uh, convert this to an auto number, you can define your own auto numbering format. Right? So this is the format that I have de defined. So it's a speedy product. And, and the number of digits here, remember that this is your projection uh, as of how many products that you might need to enter in the system in the future. Okay, so I have created, I have added actually two uh, data fields. One of them is called product code. This is a text field. So this is a text field of 255 length, but we will see how we can limit this even further with a validation rule and the product description is a text area right and if we go to our page layouts check that these uh, data fields are on my layout yes i have the product id which i cannot really modify because this is an auto number and i have the product code and product description all right so let's see how this looks like. This is my product uh, tab. So remember that every time you add a custom object, which is here in our case, um, speedy product, you need to create a tab to that uh, custom object so that you can actually navigate to it so that you can make it visible as a tab in your uh, custom lightning application if you don't create a tab for speedy products it will still exist in the system you can still use it but you will not be able to navigate to it uh, inside your application all right so if i click new then we will get the um, the page layout for my speedy product custom object now the product ID is an auto number, so it will be generated. It will be assigned an auto number uh, when I hit save. Uh, but I'm able to um, fill in these two data fields, which is product code and product description. Now, product code is the data field with a validation rule behind. So what is the validation rule behind this field? So let's take a look at that. Here I have created a validation rule. Let's uh, let's open this and check it out together. You need to give it a name. Okay, so this is product code format. And then the description is okay, check the format of the product code field, check prefix and check uh, total length. Right, so here actually I have I forgot to modify this. So it's checking a couple of other stuff. Check not blank. 
check prefix. It's not checking the length at this moment, so let's add that together. Right. Okay, let's save this. Now what it's going to what this validation rule is going to check is that this field product code field is not empty. First of all, it's not blank. Then it's going to check for the prefix. So the value that I enter in this data field can either start with uh, PRD or PRX say that this is a product and this is an external product just as an example and the total length of the data that i enter into this data field cannot exceed 10. actually it must be 10. okay uh, sorry about that so the total length must be 10. not 9 not 11 it must be 10. okay so we could define this otherwise. We could make it, you know, smaller than or equal smaller and things like that. But if you want to uh, stick with uh, a number formatting for your product code, which is identical in every case, then you might want to just make it one number. So every time it must be 10 in total. Okay, so let's cancel this. Let's refresh and let's try to create a new uh, speed of product. So remember the rule. So it can't, it can't be left empty. I tried to save it, um, with no value inside and, um, and it's giving me an error. Let's start with a prefix that's not allowed PRM. But let's get the total length correct. So at this time, I have four, five, and 10 in total, 10 characters. However, the prefix is not allowed. All right. So let's put a prefix that is actually allowed, but let's add one more digit. Right. So let's uh, check that our validation rule actually works. So now I have PRX, which is an acceptable prefix for this validation rule. And the total length of characters that I input into this data field uh, is 10. All right. Now, you see that this has created my speedy product correctly because i have actually met all the criteria of this validation rule i have a prefix that's accepted and the total length is also acceptable now this validation rule will not kick in only at the creation of uh, this product actually it will kick in every time i try to modify this data field the content of this data field. So if I go in and I've, if I want to change this to PRT, remember PRT is not an acceptable prefix, I should get an error message. So if I change this to PRY, error message. If I change this to PRD, which is acceptable, but add two more digits here, again, I get an error message, right? But if I, if I do everything correctly, acceptable prefix, not blank, and total length is exactly 10 characters, I save, then I can modify that data field, right? So again, to recap, uh, here, our validation rule is focusing on only one data field, but it doesn't have to be that way. In a single validation rule, I'm able to, um, I'm able to check on several data fields, right? 
And this, this will be actually the topic of my next video, because if we check on several data fields, then we can uh, create a conditionally required um, field. So if, say, for example, you answer yes to your first field, so you have to fill out um, two additional data fields because you answered yes in the first field, right? So these are, uh, so a validation rule, again, uh, it's checking on several conditions of a single or uh, several data fields, okay? But again, I mean, it doesn't have to be data fields. It can be several, several other things. A validation rule can include many other aspects of Salesforce and your Lightning app or your session or your record type or your profile, right? Your custom permissions. So there's a bunch of things that you can check on inside a validation rule. It's not only about data fields, okay? But this is just a simple example of how a data field would behave with a validation rule behind. All right. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope this video has been useful. If you can please give this video a like, it would be great support to my efforts. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.